Hey, what's up, Friday Lead Club? This is Larry, the Robot Maker. You need to come to one of Larry's classes. Class four is the best presentation. It was fantastic. We would come back. Definitely. Anytime. Anytime. Tell us the city. We'll be there. Way over delivered. Mind completely blown with that. Larry is the king of Facebook. He's awesome at what he does. He's got a great following. Larry is a scene for social media. Hey, this guy is a social media sensation. When it came to social media, Larry wrote the book. If you get Larry Lee to market you half as hard as he tries to market me, you're going to make a little bit of money. Anybody else have a question? If you guys want to watch the whole you can leave it. Don't worry, I won't get, I won't get offended. Uh, any questions? Hey, what's up guys? This is Larry, the robot maker, robot general. And I want to thank you for watching this video webinar. Now I want to introduce myself a little bit before I get on the topic. Uh, I am a social media coach and I also run my own ad agency. So I'm actually responsible for over a hundred people's uh, marketing and ads managers and not only creating ads for them, but also coaching them on how to leverage it correctly. Now, this video is actually designed to supplement what I've built for them or what I am coaching them so that they can extract the most return on investment on their social media efforts, time, energy, as well as their, uh, their efforts in general. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to show you my screen here. I've got a question for you guys. Have you ever called age leads or old leads and found out that they already bought? The lead did convert, just not with you. The question is, why not? Okay. And in general, I believe it's because we as marketers and lead generation uh, experts uh, or amateurs, uh, we focus on passive results. We don't really consider the actual action to create active results. So what's the difference between passive and active? Passive meaning we built the system and we just launch it and whatever uh, appears in our inbox, uh, we call and we follow up and we uh, measure the results of the conversion as how well we're doing, right? So basically we get like 100 leads and then maybe two of them buy and we think to ourselves, okay, well, we convert it at 2%. Right, that's the passive way of thinking. The active way of thinking is actually what you do once you get to leave, right? Uh, and see, there's nothing wrong with only focusing on the results. You can't improve what you don't measure, uh, but I think it's incomplete, okay? I think there's two types of actual conversion, the, the actual conversion concept, okay? There's the noun, which is the results, and then there's also the verb, which is the action, okay? And I believe that once you realize this and harness it, this knowledge properly, uh, your ROI on your lead conversion and lead generation will exponentially increase, okay? So what I mean is I believe that most people uh, actually uh, only think about the fact that, you know, they have like uh, maybe like a funnel, right? And then the funnel uh, has leads going in and then the results are leads, right? And depending on the leads and how they convert, right, uh, is actually the results or the data that they determine how well their marketing is, right? So uh, that's what most people do. And that's what most marketing companies and ad agencies focus on, the leads and how well it converts. How well does... Uh, the marketing actually uh, becomes a prospect or an actual customer. Now, if you really think about it, there's actually a whole bunch of different types of conversions, right? Uh, there's actually the lead, 
uh, actually giving you information, right? So like basically uh, name, number, and email, right? They give you your name and the number and the email, right? Right, some people consider that one type of conversion. Another type of conversion is actual clicks, right? So they don't really give information, but they click. They saw your ad and they did something with the ad. Maybe they went to the next step. Maybe they actually went to uh, look at your offer, your video, whatever, right? Um, so that's another type of conversion. Uh, another conversion or another measure of conversion is people who actually answer, right? Whether they answer uh, the phone uh, or a text message or an email, right? But the fact that you got their name, number, email doesn't mean anything. It's the fact that you reached out and they actually responded, right? So that's another measure of conversion. And the conversion that most people are thinking or wondering about or, or really what they really care about is the actual uh, transaction, right? An actual sale, right? So leads that actually buy, right? So this is what most people consider lead conversion, okay? You know, uh, or different types of lead conversion. You know, you get a name, number, email, people opt in, uh, maybe based on clicks or subscriptions or whatever, uh, when someone actually responds or an, an actual sale, right? Ultimately, these are all considered results, okay? And that's the thing that I believe is what's uh, hurting people when it comes to actually uh, getting success or finding success inside their lead generation systems okay so uh, from my perspective uh, there's two types of the conversion and the one that i want to focus on today is the actual verb okay of conversion okay so basically most people look at conversion as a noun right it's the results you know when someone asks me how well does your marketing or your funnels convert what they're asking me is what are the results right and to me, that's a great question because you want to know what you're getting. If you're going to purchase something, you're going to do something or build something. But that's only a part of the question you should be asking yourself. The, the, the question that most people do not ask or think about is how well do I convert or how well does the person ask me the question? convert? Meaning what are they going to do once they get the lead? Okay. See, this is where I believe that most people uh, fail. Okay. And this is the thing. Whenever people ask me about the results of my uh, clients in the funnels I build, I tell them it's, it, it varies. And they're like, well, what does that mean? It's like, well, some people, uh, they, they're getting zero results. Some people are saying like nothing's converted, nothing has happened yet. And then I have other people that are like, this is the best thing in the world. I have one client and she's kind of a, a funny example, but she herself uh, within two months generated about 300 leads, uh, already has seven pre-qualifications and two of them under contract, right? So that's literally seven leads out of 300 that quote, quote, converted, right? And she still thinks that that's bad, okay? When that's okay, you know, that's her own opinion. But why is she getting the results when other people who may have converted or may have received more leads or maybe they have been doing lead generation longer and they haven't converted anything from their uh, marketing efforts? I believe it's because her lead conversion Okay, as the, I spelled that wrong. Lead conversion as the verb, okay, is more powerful or stronger than uh, the normal person, okay? The action of lead conversion uh, she has is stronger or better or more aggressive than most people, okay? And this is the thing that, uh, you know, I try not to throw it in a person's face when they ask me. Right, but when they say, "Well, how well does your leads convert?" I go, "Well, it actually depends on the person getting the lead." Okay, and I think that's a very honest and uh, factual answer. Okay, and of course they're like, "Oh, well, I'm great at conversion, whatever." I'm like, "Okay, no problem. I understand that." But I'm just letting you know that you can't judge the marketing based on the just the 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 system. You have to also judge it based on what's going to happen once the system is doing its job. Okay, so. My main point here is that most people uh, focus on the results of passive lead generation, right? That's what most people focus on, okay? And I think that's a huge failure, okay? I think you need to focus on this. We also need to focus on 
the actual uh, action of what happens once you get the lead, okay? So this is a very active approach to lead generation. And I'm gonna give you a few examples, right? So if you have a funnel or an ad and it's generating a lot of leads and they're being sent to your inbox and you call them and they don't pick up and you dismiss that lead as a bad lead, okay? That's focusing on only the passive part, okay? The results, okay? I got the lead, I called them, they didn't pick up, it's a bad lead, okay? There is literally no uh, action uh, in that scenario, right? You're not putting any effort, any time, any energy. There's no uh, actual strategy behind what happens with the lead. You're just kind of responding to the fact that your lead gen gave you a lead, and then that's it, right? And then you dismiss it as, oh, well, lead generation doesn't work, or this funnel sucks, or this ad work, uh, this ad sucks, or the company that sold me these leads sucks right um, and and that's why I believe most people fail when it comes to uh, conversion as a whole okay the way we set it up meaning what I do for my clients as well as what I do for my students is that I actually uh, not only tell them that they need to call the, these leads of course but they also need to have a, a system a schedule uh, we actually employ uh, automated drip programs and responders and such. Uh, for example, uh, something that I designed, uh, and I didn't, I didn't make this name up, but it's called the 10 Days of Pain, uh, but I have my own version of the 10 Days of Pain. But basically, I designed a follow-up system that's automated once a lead uh, converts, meaning they give your name or email into your system. I have an automated system that sends them 11 text messages and four emails in a 10-day period in order to motivate them to respond. That way, we know that it's a lead that actually gave real information, and hopefully the response is a positive response, meaning they say something like, yes, I'm interested, yes, uh, I do need to talk to somebody, or I do want, or I am interested in what you're doing, I'm just not available right now. You at least have a conversation starter with the person directly, instead of the information they sent to your Facebook page or your ad or your funnel, right? Uh, so that is part of the action, right, that you need to create. But I believe that there's more to uh, the actual lead generation than just turning on the automated system. That is designed to uh, try not to let anything fall to the cracks. Plus, a lot of us are very busy, so we're not able to call a person immediately. So at least we have something going out and getting them uh, connected to our branding and connected to uh, our services and what we uh, offer as a value proposition, right? Uh, but of course, there's more action involved. There's the uh, actual physical follow-up. You know, if they respond to your text message, your automated text message, what do you say next? If they give you an objection, what do you give as a rebuttal, right? There's things like that that I believe most people uh, literally neglect or they're just not trained properly in order to uh, handle what happens with the lead, right? So, I mean, I hear it all the time. I hear how like a lot of people, uh, you know, they, they, they say, yeah, you know, lead generation doesn't work. I got thousands of leads and I haven't covered anything yet. I think to myself, okay, you have a thousand leads, right? And uh, typically uh, one to 2% of your database is involved in the transaction. Uh, in, in our case, real estate, right? Or mortgages, uh, one to 2% is, involved in some sort of mortgage or real estate transaction. So that's anywhere between 10 to 20 uh, actual uh, clients in your database, right? This is a statistic. This is not made up numbers or just, we're just guessing. This is actually what has been uh, marketed, tested, uh, analyzed, uh, you know, sample size, whatever, right? And this is kind of normal, or this makes sense to me because when it comes to lead generation, the conversion rate is one to 2%, right? When I used to do door-to-door uh, -door sales, they always told me about the law of averages. For every 100 doors, you're gonna find 10 buyers. When I used to promote parties, uh, the people who produce flyers for parties because they interacted with a lot of promoters, they said typically the amount of flyers you put out, 10% is what's gonna show up. So if you print out 5,000 flyers and you actually push out those 5,000 flyers, you're gonna find about 500 people who actually become patrons of your event that you're promoting, right? So it's the law of 10, right? Well, in this case, this is one to 2%, so it's even less, right? But the idea 
is that there is across the board marketing uh, metrics or rules of rules of thumb that dictates these numbers being accurate okay so if you have a thousand leads in in your database yeah 10 to 20 people who are uh, involved in some sort of real estate or mortgage transaction what are you doing to be in front of those people right you can't just call them one time okay you call the lead one time then i mean you you're literally uh, you're literally leaving money on the table okay and the reason why i say that is because how many times have you got a phone call and you didn't pick up and it was something that was important something that you need to uh, to engage with or something that you need to handle right it happens all the time okay and how many times have you ignored a phone call because you didn't recognize the number or uh, maybe uh, you had an idea or a feeling that it was a market or a salesperson okay so calling one time uh, is literally asking uh, to be ignored okay so this is why you have to have a very aggressive and very consistent uh, follow-up system okay not only with your autopilot drip campaign but also with your uh, manual or should I say human side of follow-up okay and we're gonna address that in the future but I just want to explain to you that most people probably judge their lead generation on this effort okay and this is very lazy okay not only is it lazy but I consider it very stupid okay because if you think that you're going to build a business uh, when it comes to uh, convincing people to work with you and all you're gonna do is make one phone call and decide that all your marketing and your time and energy spent is based on that one phone call and the experience of that one phone call then you definitely are in the wrong business okay that's at least my mindset right so I'm gonna give you a few examples of what we do here at robots LLC uh, for me myself personally but also with the people that we train okay not only do we get the lead to uh, you know give us information okay but we also have the 10 days of pain like I said it's an autopilot drip campaign right 10 days of pain right that's number one we also uh, employ uh, other assets like we lead the, the the person that opted in to uh, other Facebook assets or other uh, different uh, ways of marketing or capturing information right specifically for us we send them to groups okay so what I mean by that is once a lead uh, opts in then we push them to join a group okay we try to get the lead to funnel into a group why would we do that because a group is also uh, another uh, way to capture information but at the same time put people in a bucket that makes them feel safe okay you have to understand when you do Facebook marketing these people found us on Facebook right they found us on an ad okay now if you uh, find a person on Facebook and they found us on Facebook then there's a likely chance that they are comfortable with Facebook so therefore they're willing to uh, interact with other Facebook assets right like a page or like a Facebook group so these are other assets that we push uh, to to our leads okay most people are trying to uh, get them to get on the phone or an email or a text and that's it okay now you do have a chance of getting these people these leads here right you have a chance of getting these people uh, to answer the phone uh, answer email or answer text but if you don't at least have a system where you can actually try to re-engage with them again and this is why we employ the page in the group system okay now this is another option uh, for real estate agents if you have an IDX like a website that gives uh, information about homes or listings that's another way to uh, give these people an opportunity to get engaged with your branding or your value proposition now this is not the same platform you know Facebook and the Facebook page and group but it still gives them value immediately okay because right here there's no value here right this is just a response or follow -up. this is value and this is value okay so that's another uh, method or uh, system that we employ 
in my own personal lead generation for my clients and my referral partners. I employ all of this, okay? In addition to, okay? Another thing that you could consider is uh, chatbots, right? So the actual messenger system that gets people engaged from Facebook into a messenger platform, which is also a Facebook platform, okay? This is the thing about the chatbots. It's considered uh, a follow-up, but it's instantaneous, okay? What I mean by that is when someone opts in information, name, number, email, right, and they end up uh, just kind of waiting for twiddling their thumbs, and then they get a call, text, or email, there's kind of a disconnect, right? Uh, even if it's literally seconds away, it's still, there's still a disconnect. It's not like a, a switch, because what you do is you're migrating them from one environment to another, okay? But in this situation right here, you know, like these here, I'm gonna go ahead and highlight it so you guys can see. In this scenario right here, okay? In this scenario right here, the person came in on Facebook, right? And they're, stay, they kept, they're kept on Facebook, here and here, okay? Because if people use Facebook, they're obviously uh, familiar with Messenger, and that's what the chatbots do, okay? They employ a Facebook platform or asset to engage. And one of the cool things about a Messenger or chatbot is this instant gratification, okay? So instead of them opting in and waiting for someone to reply back, they're actually just going to the next step of the conversation. They opted in, they said, hey, I'm interested in what you're doing, and boom, someone is already reaching out to them immediately. Now, of course, some people are savvy enough to realize that it's just an automated chatbot system, but if they do engage, because it does ask some questions that motivates them to engage, if they do engage, you as the owner of the chatbot can actually see the conversation happen, right? And if you want to take over as a human, you can, right? And therefore, allowing the chatbot to literally tee, uh, tee the lead up for you. Okay, so again, this is just a small example of the things that we do here at Robots LLC in our coaching and as well as the assets we create so that we can uh, actually actively, okay, actively convert. So uh, one of the uh, books I'm gonna reference is called The Conversion Code by Chris Smith. Uh, he's actually one of the founders of uh, Curator. Okay, uh, and a lot of the principles he teaches, we already employ, but something that he said to me, or he said in the book that was very cool, was the fact that there's actually, uh, here, hold on one second, there's actually three, it not working, sometimes it doesn't work. Okay, there it is. Okay, there's actually three types of leads, which like here, okay. And I don't remember the actual term he called it, but I'm gonna I'm gonna describe it to you, okay. He calls it like the uh, he calls it the million, the million bucket or the million group, or whatever. Basically, he's referencing the larger audience, the wider audience, right? These these are gonna be the people that's visited your page or people that are being shown your ad. Uh, these are the people that are uh, literally the cold market, but you're uh, trying to familiarize them with you. Maybe, uh, you know, your outside, outside sphere of influence, right? So that's group number one. Group number two, he calls it the chunky middle. He calls these people, or he describes these people as people who are familiar with what it is that you're doing, uh, maybe they're a prospect, maybe uh, they're shopping, maybe they're uh, in the neighborhood or in the realm of possibility of wanting to work with you or work with someone that does what you do, right? Uh, they're not quite closed yet, right? They're uh, kicking tires, but they're kicking tires for a reason, okay? And then he calls the, the third audience the sweet spot. These are the people that he considers closable. These are the people that he thinks that if you give them the right offer or the right message, they will convert, they will purchase, they will buy, they will apply, whatever it is, okay? Now, why does he have these three audiences, okay? And it makes you wonder, okay, why does he have these three audiences? Because he's saying that there's three levels of conversion, 
Okay. And of course there's going to be more, but these are the ones he's focused on. There's three levels of conversion. Okay. So this conversion right here is actually uh, getting the attention. I would say, right. You're trying to get the attention of these people. You're trying to uh, be on their radar. You're trying to, uh, let them know who you are, right? Awareness, right? The chunky middle, okay, uh, I actually consider this brokering trust. Okay, this is what I like to call brokering trust. Okay, these are the people that you are uh, basically uh, selling to them who you are. You're closing them on you, the company, or the salesperson, or the service provider, whatever, right? Uh, you are braining yourself so that they can trust you and know you and be and believe that you are uh, worth considering, okay? And then of course the sweet spot is actually when you uh, when you actually close, okay? When you make the sale, okay? So why is this important in what we do? Well, if you think about it, if this is true, which I'm pretty sure you can uh, agree that this is true, then why are you focusing your, your, your energy on one part of the sales process, right? Why are you focused on this part where the lead goes in to the funnel and it pops out your, their name, okay? Their name, their number, and email, and you call one time, and that's basically how you judge conversion. Think about it, okay? If this is true, right, then how can you determine your marketing or the marketing of others based on just this one thing? It makes zero sense, okay? This, this is obvious that there's different levels of conversion, different levels of marketing, different levels of converting. He actually calls it, uh, if I if I don't uh, if I'm not mistaken, converting or conversion. Maybe it's conversion. Conversion marketing. That's what he calls it. Okay. So not only do you have the marketing to get their attention and get awareness, but you're also uh, using marketing or funnels of conversion to brand yourself to broker trust, and then of course the offer okay so there's many levels to the actual concept of conversion okay it can't be just how many leads actually uh become a close sale once you call them right it, again it it takes more than just the one touch okay so long story short is there's two types of conversion okay there's the actual noun which is the results. And then there's the verb. Let me clear that up. Which is the action. And I believe most people fail at that. Most people do not employ action. They might actually try, but they don't have a strategy. They're not trained. They don't have the right scripts or they're not reaching out properly or they're not reaching out uh, at the right time or maybe they're using the wrong system. Maybe someone opted in on Messenger and you're trying to get them on the phone, right? There's different uh, variables or variances of the scenario that you're in, but at least consider this part of conversion, okay? Because most people will look at this and I think that's that's very wrong. I think that's that's probably the uh, the number one problem with lead generation is people are only focused on how well does it convert, right? How well does it convert? What I think you should focus on is you know how well do you how well do you convert? Something that Chris Smith said, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and wrap up after this. Something that Chris Smith said in his uh, Audible uh, version of his book, right? Um, and it, it, it struck me. He said that he can 
literally, I think he said he actually can bet, but he did say he can guarantee or he can bet that if you were to give him a, your database, he would find some sales in, right? He's, he basically said, and you know, I took this to heart, you know, I was like, wow. He said, if I had access to your database, the people that are in your inbox, the people that are in your CRMs, in your spreadsheets or whatever, he said that he could probably call those people selling what I sell and he would convert people. So basically he's telling me that he himself can find deals where I haven't found it yet, right? And that's something that's very striking. That's something that to me uh, shows that someone like Chris, who's an expert obviously, uh, shows that there is a way to convert leads and deals even if you are working with old or aged or other people's databases or CRMs or leads, okay? So hopefully you got some value of that. Of course, if you have any questions, uh, if you want more information, uh, I'm probably gonna add something later on to this video, but I just want to uh, give you guys something to think about. And I also want to uh, motivate you as well as uh, entice you